Peel's sandy beach is a favourite with many Manx families. On the promenade, there are a number of small cafes and ice cream stalls to offer refreshment when the sun beats down. Here, it's Peel Day, on the day called Mad Sunday during the TT Festival, and the ancient town really lets its hair down. On the beach, and the weather is certainly doing its bit, the stars from the world of motorcycling entertain the crowd. There's lots of entertainment on the prom and on the beach for all the family. Bouncy castles, a little smaller than the castle across the bay, are always a sure-far hit with the children. The promenade is buzzing throughout the day. At the back of the town is the tall chimney for the power station. The light at the top is set to provide a useful guide for sailors heading for the safety of the port. Scallops have been processed here for hundreds of years with their empty shells once cast over the cliffs at this point. The castle at Peel stood on St. Patrick's Isle. The Vikings built the fortress in wood initially. The best guess is that it was after the arrival in 1098 of Magnus Barefoot. The wooden paling on top of the rampart may have been the origin of the word peel. The red sandstone walls appeared in the 14th century with the stone found in abundance locally. The walls were called the red curtain and other walls the green curtain after the slate used. The building also served as a prison. The latest alterations were during the Napoleonic Wars. It's thought missionaries arrived here about 550. They were disciples of St. Patrick. The tower in the grounds of the castle is typical of the type found at monastic sites in Ireland. It would serve as a lookout, as a belfry, and as a place of refuge. St. Patrick's Church was enlarged, possibly with the intention of it serving as a cathedral. Its crypt, a dank, cheerless place, was used to imprison those who broke the Sabbath by playing the violin, fishing, or making hay. Among the important archaeological finds made in the castle's grounds are a cache of silver coins dating from about 1030. An extensive burial ground with several hundred graves, including that of the so-called pagan lady buried with her beautiful necklace. The cathedral of the Diocese of Sodran Man is now located in the town in St. Germans, rather easier to get to in stormy weather. You can walk around the walls of the castle or step inside the walls and let your imagination take you back to tales of Eric Bloodaxe or the fearsome and ghostly black dog said to haunt the site. And the site is used by travelling theatre companies and has seen, for example, Shakespearean drama as well as the Hound of the Baskervilles. I wonder what would have happened had the Hound met the black dog, the Moidly Do. Quite a scrap, I would imagine. You can see what a useful strong point this castle was for Norsemen, or for Scots sailing down the Irish Sea, heading perhaps for the Black Pool, the meaning of the word Dublin. It's easy to see where buildings once stood where the castle was fully operational. A considerable stronghold for the power of the day to, well, lord it over the people below. A road was built and a causeway to join St. Patrick's Isle to the body of the town. 
Protected on the seaward side by a wall, it runs alongside Fenella Beach.